Hey everybody, I want to show y'all my new hay tether. Um, it's an Enrossi en or Enrosso, or I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, Vortex four basket, 17 foot wide hay tether. Um, this is the first four basket hay tether I've had. Uh, I've had two nine or 10 foot tethers, uh, which is two baskets. I've had two of them. Um, I've always wanted a four basket or have for a long time, just never have been able to afford one. Luckily, I sold a hay rake that I had, an old hay rake, and I want my newest tether, a uh, two basket tether, and was able to purchase this machine. And I bought it sight unseen, other than looking at it on pictures, and I had glanced at one uh, briefly at another dealership one day. Um, but I'll go ahead and tell you, this tether is $5,900 what I paid for it. Um, it was the cheapest, best quality tether that I could find. Um, yeah, I could have bought a more expensive one, but I don't see the need in it for, for my purposes. And I'll cover some of that with you in just a minute. I had looked at a rhino tether which is the same thing as a ranch ride or a bush hog brand um citrix maybe i don't know a lot of them use that same tether just rename it i don't know who actually makes it probably citrix but the rhino was 6900 this one was 5900 and um but the Rhino wasn't built near as heavy duty as this, even for the extra thousand dollars. It was not near the machine as this. This is a lot more narrow. It's round tubular instead of this big heavy box tubing. Um, these swivel joints right here are real weak looking on it. And I've heard a lot of people having trouble with the bushings and stuff in them wearing out and having to change those bushings. This one has grease fittings on both sides of the bushings. Uh, this is at least half inch or five eighths plate right here on both sides that these ears are being out of uh, to attach this box frame to it. This All this box frame um, it's an eighth inch or better. It's more than an eighth inch. I don't know what it would be exactly. It's not three sixteenths but it looks like it's more than an eighth. It might be three sixteenths. I don't believe it hardly is though. But anyways Real heavy built, real heavy built tether. Um, it also has right here uh, spring push outs to help the, the arms to push out to fall down once you unlatch them, which is very nice as well. I noticed that sitting here on this hill, um, that that helps to push this upper side on down. If you didn't have that, it wouldn't fall down on its own. You'd have to be sitting perfectly left. Another thing's right here where this hitch mounts. You got half inch plate. Um, cut out for your hitch to, to bolt to and swivel which is very heavy duty all this tubing and this this metal on your hitch and stuff is just it's extremely stout built really stout built and you got a lot more leverage up here for your adjustments right here for your adjustments to make the adjust the pitch of the tether where it's up here and up here higher you got more leverage uh, which takes less strain off of this uh, screw. That way you can easier, more easily adjust it. It also has a lock spring here to where that it holds it in place and it can't uh, vibrate out of adjustment on you. This hitch right here, half inch steel, cut out, welded solid. I mean, it's just nothing has been skimped on um, on the structure of this machine. You have grease fittings. It's got a double universal joint. It's got grease fittings easily to accessible. Um, you can see here the thickness of these plates I was talking about, how heavy they're built. All your rotor heads have grease fittings on the top and the bottom. Um, this push out has grease fittings. All these end, the end rotor heads, they have grease fittings. It has an oil bath gearbox, of course, right here. These tethers are made in Italy. Um, 
most a lot of hay equipment's built in Italy these days. All all of it seems like pretty good stuff too. I'm very very pleased with the design and build quality of this tether. The only tether that I price that I feel like build quality is comparable to this one um, is a crone. And a crone is $9,000 to $9,500. But the thing about the crone I do like better is that these arms right here and the tether teeth. They're a little heavier duty teeth. They're a pipe um, tube on the crone. And the, the bend in them adjusts the pitch to where that the whole tooth catches the crop instead of the outer tooth catching the most of it. Um, but as far as the frame and stuff, this one is built every bit as heavy as the chrome. But for the money difference, um, I can stand these these arms like this. I mean, they'll, they'll hold up fine. That's what I've been used to using, but you can bend them. I've bent them before and things. But they're easy to replace and probably not that expensive to replace. And I could make one in a pinch if I had to. I could make my own real quick. But, um, that is the only one. I, I've look, I looked at Kubotas and and uh, the Vermeer. I like the Vermeer too. I didn't like the Kubota tethers, but for the money, I, none of them had anything on this this tether, in my opinion. I mean, it's just for the amount you save uh, and the build quality you get on this. This is the best way to go. Best bang for your buck. I'll let this down now and let you see it. What you do, you'll pull in on your jacks pull your rope to release your latches and then let it fall down. For those of you that might not know uh, what a hate header is and what it's used for, I know a lot of people might watch my channel that's used to, you know, living in more suburb areas and stuff where you don't see um, farm work done. But what the tether does is after you've cut your hay, you, I usually let mine dry for a day. Sometimes if I cut it early that evening, I'll tether it. What that does, it, it catches the crop, it scatters it out, spreads it out, flips the bottom kind of more to the top um, and gets it lifted off the ground where air can flow through it, spreads out any clumps that's in the field and things to cut your dry time down a lot faster. If you want to get a little rain on your hay crop, it'll also spread it out to help it re-dry when it's been matted down on the ground and that type of thing, which that's a condition you hope you never have, but it does happen. Um, but this will really speed up, speed up our work, going from 10 foot to 17 foot should make a big, big, big difference. But right here, Adjust your pitch to where you can get the pitch right as far how high it is off the ground or not. Some of the more expensive tethers does have a hydraulic um, jack right here for the pitch, but I didn't really care much about that. I mean, it'd be nice to have, but I wasn't going to spend the extra money for it. Because once you get it set, you run it until you get ready to move fields. But it, this adjusts extremely easy for this size tether. Really good built machine. If y'all are looking for a hay tether, be sure and try to find a dealer that sells the Enrossi, or Enrosso, however how you pronounce it, Vortex tethers. I believe it'll be a real good machine. I'm looking forward to using it and uh, give y'all some feedback on how it performs in the hay field here soon. If you will, please like, subscribe, and comment, and I appreciate you watching.